Ladies and gentlemen, as you know also from the previous uh, lectures, uh, microbiota of the human GI tract is very complex. However, the composition of microbiota differs along the gastrointestinal tract in reference to number of microorganisms and microbial groups. Here are numbers of microorganisms and different groups of it. The structure differs between uh, other organs. However, the function of it seems to be very similar. And please see the uh, picture number B, where the function of uh, the microbiota seems to be very similar in different organs. For example, metabolic pathways. This uh, picture, this slide, shows temporal variations in general abundance in fecal samples from a single human individual who was sampled daily for 15 months. The colors indicate several genera. For example, red is bacteroides, uh, fecalibacterium is batch, and so on. Factors influencing microbiota composition are very different. For example, birth mode, breastfeeding, diet, exercise, disease, aging, drugs, and also, of course, geography. Gut barrier, as uh, you have heard from the previous, previous uh, lectures, it is very complex structure. Uh, it separates uh, internal environment, sorry, internal environment and external, which is partly represented by lumen of the GI tract. Tight junction is very composed structure, which is an element of the gut barrier composition. However, gut barrier composed of also gut epithelial cells, gut vascular endothelium, gut lymphatic vessels, and many, many other structures. Uh, the differences between small and large intestinal barrier you have uh, in this picture, uh, because this barrier differs along the GI tract. And for example, here we can see the difference in number of uh, immune cells, which is much larger in the small intestine than in large intestine. There are a lot of other differences also. Many years ago, Sir Jones uh, built, construct theory of auto-intoxication from gut bacteria. This idea said that gut flora disturbances and increased intestinal permeability might contribute to the development of several diseases. You have heard the previous uh, lecture about leaky gut. And we can say that barrier defect together with microbial dysbiosis uh, lead to dysregulation of immune response. And here is many changes. We can, we can see many changes compared to this uh, functional barrier in the physiological situation. Potential causes of gut barrier damage are nutritional factors, infections, toxins, pharmaceuticals, and many, many other. Also among them, one of the most important is SIBO. Here are other potential causes of gut barrier damage. For example, some of 
This is in GI tract and also other disease. Definition, what is SIBO? Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is hyperplasia of bacteria types typical for colon in small bowel leading to disorders of digestion and absorption as well as clinical symptoms for many organs. And more than 100,000 colony-forming units of bacteria per one milliliter of aspirate from proximal jejunum and all the presence of colon type tribes uh, is necessary to diagnose SIBO. Diagnosis uh, could be confirmed by direct, uh, direct um, examination of aspirate from the proximal small bowel, but it is possible to have indirect confirmation also. Uh, it could be reached by a glucose breath test. We have some breath tests. For example, glucose has high sensitivity and high specificity. Lactulose breast test has lower sensitivity and specificity, but uh, sometimes uh, it can be used also. According to North American consensus, a rise in hydrogen over 20 parts per million by 90 minutes during this breast test was considered positive. Factors promoting the development of SIBO. There are a lot of them. For example, motility disturbances, decreased of gastric acid secretion, for example, during administration of PPI, fistula, strictures in the GI tract, impairment of the illocical valve, anatomical abnormalities of the small bowel, immunodeficiency, neurologic disease like Alzheimer or Parkinson disease, advanced age, chronic pancreatitis, administration of steroids, obesity, advanced liver disease also. Typical symptoms are loss of weight, bloating, abdominal pain, chronic diarrhea, and undernutrition. Consequences of SIBO are the conjugation of bile salts, diarrhea, Statoria, damage of enterocytes in the villi, loss of disaccharidases activity, malabsorption of vitamins, weight loss, but sometimes also uh, weight gain. IBS, meteorism, flatulence, peptic ulcer disease, abdominal pain, and also NIFLD. Increase of gut permeability and dysbiosis lead to endotoxemia and then lipid accumulation in the liver, afterwards NIFLD and NASH. It was proved that intestinal permeability uh, increases uh, in uh, damage of the liver in NIFLD and spatial in moderate or severe steatosis. The prevalence of SIBO increases in subjects with moderate or severe steatosis. <clears throat> SIBO contributes to the pathogenesis of NIFLD by, uh, you uh, can uh, see it in the previous lectures, but uh, in summary, uh, by increasing ethanol production, metabolizing dietary choline, the position of three glycerides in the liver, uh, FFA, mitochondrial beta-oxidation, lipid peroxidation, releasing of lipopolysaccharide, and uh, increase of production of statogenic pro-inflammatory cytokines. 
lipopolysaccharides from the bacteria uh, lead to subclinical inflammatory state and insulin resistance. Among them, uh, stimulation can stimulate innate, innate immune system and release of pro-inflammatory cytokines from adipose tissue. Ladies and gentlemen, SIBO, intestinal bacterial overgrowth, is very common in obese patients, in patients with high fat diet and with fructose in the diet. Uh, this uh, situation can stimulate uh, the um, uh, SIBO. And migration of aerobic pathogens and their products from the gut to mesenteric nodes and other organs are, is very important. It leads to overproduction of um, inflammatory cytokines and to oxidative stress and together with insulin resistance, it provoke uh, the progression from healthy liver by steratosis uh, by NASH to cirrhosis. So um, these are very complicated mechanisms, but, but in summary, we can say that SIBO and impermeability plus LPS influx lead to activation of toll like receptors stimulate transcription of NF-kappa-beta gene, inflammatory pathways in Kapfer cells, then activation of genes of cytokines, ROS generation, profibrotic factors producing by stellate cells, impair insulin signaling, efflux of FFA, alters mitochondrial activation, and then liver damage. It was proved that special importance of good microbiota in the liver damage and progression from NRFLD to NASH and cirrhosis in, is one of the most important phenomena. Obesity and NRFLD are associated with decrease in the ratio of bacteroides to firmicutes and obese microbiome has an increased capacity for extracting energy from the diet. Uh, it was shown that uh, prevalence of SIBO in obese patients is about 40%. Gastric motility uh, is changed in this situation, and accelerated rate of gastric emptying of solids in obese subjects and excessive amount of food in the duodenum could serve as a substrate for bacteria, and it is probably one of the causes of obesity. Small bowel motility disorder, bile acids levels, and bacterial overgrowth may be involved in the pathogenesis of Goldstone disease. Here you can see pattern of glucose breast test for SIBO in Goldstone patients. Here are SIBO positive. Mean uh, of serum bile acids in small intestinal bacterial overgrowth uh, in SIBO positive patients is increased. Here is uh, to show on this picture and orosical transit time, or CCT, uh, in positive, uh, SIBO-positive patients is prolonged. Here is the relationship between increased OCTT and serum bile acid levels. So prolonged OCTT and uh, SIBO development lead to production of deoxycholate, precipitation of cholesterol in bile, and gallstone disease. The other topic, ulcerative colitis patients. Intestinal inflammation and immune activation lead to 
uh, altered function of enteric nerves, intestinal cells of cahal, or even smooth muscle. Delayed OCTT increased SIBO prevalence in these patients. The presence of SIBO in UC patients is directly proportional to the increased cytokines. And here we can see that in patients with UC, the uh, SIBO positive number of SIBO positive patients increased compared to controls. Also, OCCT is prolonged compared to controls. According to uh, uh, this phenomena, uh, SIBO positive patients have higher concentration of propinate pro inflammatory cytokines. Crohn disease. Patients with Crohn disease are especially predisposed to develop of SIBO. But SIBO represents also complication, one of the complications of CD. And SIBO um, often is difficult to differentiate from this caused by the underlying disease. It was proved that patients SIBO positive with Crohn disease has higher frequency of stools. This difference is statistically significant. And also other uh, symptoms like bloating, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and some other symptoms are more common in SIBO-positive Crohn disease patients. Ladies and gentlemen, humoral and neuronal pathways in brain-gut axis are influenced by gut microbiota also. However, this integration of the microbiota into the gut-brain axis is bidirectional. For example, infection and uh, use of antibiotics or other factors can lead to um, perturbation of the microbiota. And it is the cause of altered behavior of brain and, for example, psychiatric comorbidity. Independently, perturbation of the microbiota leads to low-grade inflammation, chronic gut dysfunction, and symptom generation. The examples of disturbances of brain-gut axis are IBS, functional dyspepsia, schizophrenia, depression and mood disturbance, autism, neurodegenerative disease, and many, many others. Disturbances of permeability of the duodenal wall can cause functional dyspepsia. However, disturbances of microbiome lead to visceral hypersensitivity. Gastroparesis is not so common like uh, dyspepsia, but about 40 to 60 percent of patients with gastroparesis have SIBO. Prevalence of SIBO in EBS patients is approximately 80 percent. IBS may be associated with changes, decrease in this situation in microbial diversity. Here we can see duodenal flora in IBS so, sorry, patients. Sorry, what time do you need? <clears throat> One minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. And here is duodenal flora in healthy subject, more diversified. SIBO treatment is another topic. Only very briefly, dietary manipulation, prokinetics in motility disorders, and also antibiotics. In conclusion, SIBO is commonly the result of many factors, inflammation of the bowel, medication, anatomical problems, fistulas, motility disorders, diet, and many others. 
SIBO affects many organs and may have the influence on the development of or progression of many diseases. And the treatment includes the diet modification, antibiotics or abiotics administration, and sometimes surgical correction. Thank you very much for your attention.